Ooh, I am so excited about this one. This game is called Everdell, and that tree you saw in the intro sequence, well, we're gonna put that on the tree stump with the seasons facing towards the center of the board. Now, just like you would find these objects in an actual forest, go ahead and place the berries, the pebbles, resin, and twigs along the bank of the river, and all your point tokens and occupy tokens to the side of the board. Shuffle the forest cards and place them on the forest clearing. For two players, use only three cards, but for three to four players, use all four spaces. Now take the basic event tiles and place them along the river with this corresponding name. So the building is for the city monument event, the sailboat correlates with the grand tour, the tent goes with the harvest festival, and the trailers go with the cartographer's expedition. And the ever tree isn't just there to look pretty because you're going to take four of the special event mini cards and place them on the lower branches of the ever tree. With the main deck of cards, shuffle those and then place eight face up on this huge clearing called the meadow and the rest of the deck fits perfectly at the base of the ever tree. After that, have each player choose a colored character and everyone gets two of those specific workers. The other four workers go to the upper branches with one on spring, one on summer, and then two on autumn. One minute setup, I like it. And it's funny because to choose the person that goes first, the rulebook states that the most humble player will go first, which is probably why I'd always be last in my group. Anywho, the first player will draw five cards, second player draws six, third player draws seven, and the last player will draw a total of eight cards. Everdale is a really simple worker placement game, but there's definitely a lot of depth to it once you go past the basic mechanics of it. So on your turn, you can perform one out of three actions. The first thing you can do is play one card. There are two types of cards. The constructions are all various types of buildings, but on the top left corner is the requirement to play this particular card. For example, here we have the courthouse, but it costs one twig, one resin, and two pebbles to play it. But once you do play it, this construction becomes part of your city, which is a 15 card limit zone. Critter cards also have a cost on the top left corner, but if you have the construction that's listed on there, you can actually play the critter for free. The limitation to this is that you can only do this once per construction, and you have to put an Occupy token on the construction if you use the whole free reroll. This symbol shown here is also the card type, and there are five different card types, but they're pretty straightforward, so you can just refer to them on page 10 of the rulebook to find each symbol's listed meaning. Now cards will also list the number of points that they're worth at the end of the game, and of course, on the very bottom is the effect that the card will give you. Now make sure you keep in mind three different things. One, eight is the hand limit, so you can't draw any more than eight cards. And if you're required to give cards to an opponent who already has those eight cards, then you have to discard them instead. Two, if you're playing a card from the meadow, make sure you place it from the main deck. And if the main deck runs out, just shuffle the discard pile and make that the new main deck. And three, for the constructions, if it says unique on it, then it means you can only have one copy of it in your city, so you'd have to discard the extra copies, either from a card effect or from sending your workers to the haven. Okay, cool, so that was the first action, which was to play one card. But now that you have cards, you want to play them, only problem is, where the flip are your resources? So now this is where the second action comes into play, where you can place or deploy a worker. So across the whole game, you'll see paw prints with either closed or semi-closed circles. You can place a worker in any of these locations, but only one can be in the exclusive circle, one where it's like pretty much fully closed. <laughs> and multiple people can be in the shared circle, the um, not enclosed circle. You just can't have two of your own workers at the same spot. Now, once you place a worker there, they're stuck there permanently until you bring them back with the third available action that I'll talk about in a second. And there are also these symbols with the four on them, which just means that it's exclusive to a four player game. So let's take a closer look at the spots that you're allowed to place workers. We have basic action spaces where you can gain the resources that we talked about earlier. You can also go to a haven, which is the only spot actually that has no limit to the amount of same or different colored workers that can be placed there because by going to a haven, you're allowed to discard any number of cards. And for every two cards you discard, you can gain one of any type of resource. You can also place workers on destination cards, both in your city and in any other player city that has an open sign on it. But if you do place your worker on an open sign in another player's city, then the owner of that city gains one point token from the supply. 
So remember the four basic and special events that we placed on the ever tree itself in the setup? You can also place workers there too as long as you meet its listed requirement. And lastly, exclusive to the autumn season, you can send one of your workers on a journey. So if you look on this pathway, it actually shows you the number of cards that you have to discard in order to put one of your workers there. So the first spot says two, meaning you discard two cards in order to place your worker here. The benefit is that you gain this many victory points at the end of the game. Notice though that the first spot is shared and the rest of the circles are exclusive. So people could be fighting over this pathway since it's only available in the autumn. Which now brings us to the final action you can take, preparing for a season. Now the game begins in late winter. It ends when the next winter approaches so it's pretty quick and autumn is the last season where you can perform this prepare for season action. So to do this you must have already placed all your workers because the whole point of having a prepare for season action is to let you and you alone bring your workers back. And that's it. So since we started in winter, if we were to prepare for season now, then you can bring back your two workers that you started with, gain one new worker for spring, and then activate any cards that have this green production symbol on it on your city. And in the summer, you get one more worker. There's no production this time, but you can still activate the green cards if you play them during summer. And you can draw up to two metal cards when you prepare for summer. In the autumn, you gain the last set of workers, totaling six workers. And then you can activate all the green production cards in your city, which leads us now to the end game conditions. So, if you can no longer perform any more actions, then your game is finished and you have to pass so you can't receive any more cards or resources. So they then get discarded instead of having someone trying to pass them to you. And once everyone passes, then we start adding up all the victory points. Now points score pretty high in this game and the rulebook recommends you add up your cards first, followed by the coins, and then the prosperity card bonus points, the journey points, and then lastly add the events. And if there's a tie, then it goes to the person that has the most events. And if there's a double tie, then the most leftover resources wins in the end. Okay, cool. So let's do a quick recap. So Everdell comes down to you having three basic actions. The first action is that you can play one card. And to do that, you just have to pay the requirements. Or if it's a critter, you can do it for free if you have the listed construction. Just make sure you only do this once per construction. And you can keep note of it by putting an Occupy token on the construction. But now you need a way to generate those resources, right? So the second action is to place a worker in order to get those resources, or you can put them in a destination, or if your hands are full, you can put them in a haven to discard two cards in exchange for any resource. And you can also put workers in an event if you meet the requirements. And lastly, if it's autumn, you can deploy workers on a journey in order to get more victory points. But the problem is you're gonna run out of workers eventually. So the last action is preparing for a season meaning you just bring all your workers back. And as example, let's say it's preparing for spring. You will now have three workers total, and then you can activate any of your green production cards. And that is the setup, some B-roll and a tutorial for Everdell. So like my last video for Archimage, I want to do a full sample round um, going through an entire season, but I also want to include the solo rules and my final thoughts about the game, which is why I'm going to split this into two separate videos. So see you guys in a couple days.